In 2020, a Soyuz Indian band chief, Clarence Louie, was inducted into the Business Laureates of BC Hall of Fame. It was another recognition of the business successes he developed for his band. Since 1988, the Soyuz Indian Band Development Corporation has focused on business development as a social enterprise. Louis says these businesses are owned by the band and they are managed and run by chief and council with the sole purpose of creating opportunities for our members and generating revenue to support the community. The band has 460 members and employs more than 700 people. We have a job for every member of our band if they want to work, says Louie. We invited Chief Clarence Louie to join us for a conversation that matters about his businesses, his strategies, and how he manages dual roles as Chief of the Soyuz Indian Band and as Head of the Development Corporation. Chief Louis, welcome. The Soyuz Indian Band Development Corporation is an economic entity that was created so that the people of the Soyuz could and would achieve economic freedom through the development of opportunities that would support the needs of community and provide employment. You're chief of the band and you're also head of the development corporation. How do you describe your job? I always tell people it's similar to a mayor or a premier, but a lot more complicated, a lot more politics. We deal with things from cradle to grave. We deal with personal issues, health issues of members, and everything. And you also deal an awful lot with economic development, far more so than a mayor would. So why is economic development so important to you? Economic development is the basis of any uh, society that's independent. You have to be an independent. In order to be an independent person, you have to, you have, to have a full-time job and make decent income or else you're not dependent or you're not independent. So in order for a, a band to be independent, they have to have economic development just like a city does or a country does. Where did you first start to develop your insights into your leadership style and approach? I, don't, I, I never had a path. I just know I wanted to work. I wanted to make money as an individual. And belonging to the Swiss Indian Band, of course, I care about my res. I care about the band. And I care about the band operations. And just like I want to work, and it's not just me. I mean, 80%, 89% of the Swiss Indian Band members want to work. They want a full-time job. They want a good-paying job. In order to have a good-paying job, you need to attract business people, joint ventures, or lease out land, or just like a lot of First Nations are doing in the province of BC. Mm -hmm. um, many, many bands in this province uh, are making millions of dollars and creating business opportunities that expand off the, off the reserve. True. It's not just the band that benefits. It's also the surrounding communities that share in your prosperity. Well, uh, the province of BC has more, more First Nations at 203 than any, any province in the country. And there's more Indian reserves in BC at over 1,500 than any province in the country. So BC does have the most to gain or lose, depending on how its First Nations are doing. Mm -hmm. So the development corporation didn't exist prior to you coming to office. However, business development wasn't new to the band. What was the band's first deal... And how significant was it? Our first land lease was in 1963, was a golf course. Our first business, most, I don't know if any other band in Canada can say they had a band-owned business in 1968, which, which was a vineyard. Of course, of course, it started out small in 1968. 
and then we leased out some land on Osius Lake for a campground and then the band took over that campground lease in 1984 just before I was elected chief so when I was elected we had two band business operations. What was the next business you created? It would have been a construction company. We mm -hmm. started a construction company, built building houses on the reserve and off. Uh, of course we branched out into a lot, a lot of land leases and one of the best land leases was done before my time in 1980 and that was the Bright's Winery which turned into the Vincor Winery which turned into Consolatius and now it's Altero Wines. The biggest winery in Western Canada is on a Sioux Indian Reserve and has been there since 1980. Wow. So, so land leases are our, our biggest source of revenue. You know, leasing out land like the Area 27 racetrack. We don't own anything to do with Area 27 but it's on our reserve and and uh, we lease out that land. Well, we lease out land to to um, Altera Wines, up to a thousand acres of grapes. We lease to different wineries in in BC. Uh, actually, all in the Okanagan. Burry and Owl leases land from us. Mission Hills leases land from us. And of course, we have our own 300 Incomeet Vineyard, mm -hmm. 300 acre Incomeet Vineyard. When it comes to the wineries, which ones do you lease land to, and which ones do you have a business relationship with? The Jackson Triggs, the Altera Winery in Oliver is leased land. We don't have anything to do with that winery. But we joint ventured with Altera Wines, back then it was called Vincor, to create Incomeep Cellars, which is majority owned by the Seuss Indian Band. And it's an extraordinary winery. Won uh, the, uh, the Canadian Winery of the Year in 2016, so it's, it's won its share of gold medals and it's well known throughout, throughout the country. So how did you create the culture of excellence within the Osoyoos Indian Band? Well, in any sort of business ventures, we have multiple. We're involved in tourism, recreational properties, um, residential, commercial, industrial properties, lease and land out for, for vineyards you have to have a team of people. It's not one person, it's not just the chief and council. You have to surround yourself with some good advisors and uh, have some key staff on the economic development side that, uh, that know how to put projects together, know how to put joint ventures together. It, it's always a team of people. On the reserve, economic development is always done as a team, not, not one or two individuals do it. Well, a team also means you have a succession plan. Yeah, and we have some really, I mean, some of the ladies on council now, we have some good council members now, and they're, let's say, younger. They're a lot, lot younger than me in their 30s. So, you know, there's always a cycle of leadership that happens in every community. And um, I see the younger people coming up, and we have some good hard workers here. But still, the hardest workers are the old timers. No, nobody can work harder than those that are in. We have people in their 70s and 80s that are, they can outwork anybody in their 20s. Mm -hmm. You know, they have perfect attendance and they want to work seven days a week, let alone five days a week. When you spoke at the Junior Achievement Business Laureates Hall of Fame dinner, you said the most important element of leadership is to create opportunity for your constituents. Why is that essential? Well, every elected person, whether they're chief in council or whether they're elected at the municipal level, or at the provincial level, you have a window of time, I mean, I'm elected every two years. Some people are three years or four years. When, when you're elected, you, you should want to move the yardsticks. You should want to improve the quality of life of your people, whether it's your citizens, your constituents, or your people, whatever you want to call them. And that's what I want to do. You know, you, you have to raise the bar, you have to improve the quality of life of your people, and that costs money. Everything costs money. From cradle to grave, everything costs money. Spirituality costs money. Cultural programs cost money. Education, health, they all cost, as the province of BC and any municipality knows, every, roads and water services, everything costs money. So the CC ban, we got to start making more and more of our own money. And so every year we look for business opportunities because that, that's where the money comes from, is business opportunities mm -hmm. and land leases and joint ventures and the Seuss Indian Band starting its own companies. And congratulations on being inducted into the Business Hall of Fame. However, I know you say your introduction isn't just you, it's your team. Well, unlike uh, most people that get inducted into the, uh, the BC Business Hall of Fame, I'm not an individual entrepreneur. Right. I don't own any of these companies. Right. 
I never put any of my own money into these companies. It's chief of the CUC Indian Band. I work for the CUC Indian Band. It's a democracy. I don't get to make all the decisions, even as CEO. It's uh, the chief and council, if there's a council of six people. They have to get voted in by the majority of the CUC Indian Band members. So our corporation is different than, than say, Jimmy Patterson's or somebody else's. Jimmy gets to call all the shots. Here at Osuyus, I don't get to call all the shots. I have one vote, and I can easily be, a, and half the time I am outvoted. So, so here, whether you want to call it socioeconomic development or community economic development, it's uh, it, the Osuyus model or any First Nation model is different in corporate Canada mm -hmm. because uh, we make money for the band, not not as in, as an individual, we get our paychecks from the band, like any other anybody that works for a company. But these are not Clarence Louis companies. Right. They belong to the band. Of course, all the money goes back in the programs and services, and we pay a dividend payout. It's called a per capita. It's a, it's a dividend payout from our land leases and in our in our business profits. And so all of our members, like I say, from cradle, when our members get born they get money from the band. When our members die, we pay for the funeral. From cradle to grave, everything is, is done through the monies uh, raised by the CUC Indian Band Corporation. I also understand you boost funding for education and health care. Health, education, everything. Because Indian Affairs never gives any band enough money to provide any program and service on, on any res. So that's why here we have, uh, we pay a higher uh, monthly check to our students than most bands do because we supplement that income. We supplement what Indian Affairs, the small monies that Indian Affairs gives us for education, even for health. I mean, the CUC Indian Band dollar goes into 50 different programs. That dollar is broken up 50, 60 different ways. Health, recreation, education elders programs, youth programs, any sort of social service program you can think of, buying wood, donations to every to minor hockey, to every little thing you can think of. Mm -hmm. Anything a parent pays for, that's what the CUC Indian Band pays for. Wow. That's what the corporation is is developed for. It's not just uh, it's not just maximizing and making money and to be put into individual people's bank accounts. It still goes into their bank accounts through a check, but also through all the other mm -hmm. programs and services. As a result of the work and decisions made by Council over the past five decades and the ensuing economic upturn, how has this improved the quality of life for people of the Soyuz Indian Band? I would think the quality of life on a Soyuz Indian Reserve is better than most reserves. And, and it's not just the Soyuz. I could name a whole bunch of bands in BC that can put up their hands and say, we're making millions of dollars and we're creating thousands of jobs. There's a lot of bands in BC doing that, mm -hmm. but there should be more. The sad fact is a majority of bands in BC out of the 200 aren't, don't have a good quality of life. But we're lucky here in Osius with our location. And we're lucky that even before me, we had, we had chiefs and councils that wanted to lease out land and uh, develop businesses. That was before my time. And so, our people and our youth and our buildings that we have, we put a lot of money into our, our schools, our daycare, and our community buildings. And our quality of life here in Osuyus, I think, is just as good as off the reserve. And that's why it should be for all these other First Nations. Now, whether it's leadership, lack of leadership, or whether it's location, which is a problem for most First Nations, is the settlers always took the best land. Same in Osuyus, we lost 4,000 acres of our best land after the reserve was created. The province came around in 1915 and took more reserve land away because the settlers said those Indians aren't doing anything with their land, we need it. And that's where a lot of land claims come. A majority of land claims come from past injustices, land ripoffs under the reserve system. And we've gone through some of those, and we still have some outstanding land land claims here at Osuyus, like most bands do. Yeah. So, but uh, we focus on 
the quality of life through economic development. And that, I mean, the, there's no other recipe that works. You got to have economic development or else you're dependent on government crumbs. If you don't have economic development, you're going to be poor. I think every, every reserve in Canada should realize that. I mean, all these bands that are poor, they have to get back on their economic horse. And some are doing it. Many bands in the Vancouver area are back on their economic horse. Are their fishing, or, or their canoe, as they would call it, I guess, on their coast, on the, on the coast. They're, they're back in their war canoes. They're, 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 they're not sitting around with, you know, with their hands out waiting for the government to look after them. Because right. the government never properly looks after anybody, any government. But like I say, here at Osius, the, the, the chief and council has voted in by the membership, and we bring all of these land leases to the membership. It's their decision. Of course, the chief and council pushes the decision, but it's not the chief and council decision whether they lease land out. They have to get a majority vote. And, and with our monies and our programs and services, the band members have a say in that. And uh, when our, one of our people pass away, they expect the band to pay for the full, full funeral costs. And because we have economic development, we don't have to fundraise or to have um, some funerals like they do on some reserves where they're so poor that they can't afford to bury their people properly or can't afford to look after their kids properly or their daycares properly or whatever it may be. Here at Osuyus, like a lot of bands in BC, half the bands in BC, because we have our own source of revenue, um, we're, we're able to provide a quality of life that's uh, just as good as off the reserve. You talk about the complexity of the job, both as chief of the band and head of the development corporation. What are the essential elements to effective leadership in this dual role? Leadership skills, I mean, people skills, right? I mean, part of being a, being a good leader is having people skills and uh, knowing how to communicate, proper communication. And sometimes that's, that goes, you know, everybody needs a kick in the rear once in a while. Everybody does. And, uh, you know, and people need to be talked talk straight to, and sometimes the truth hurts, and, and, and you have to say it the way it is. I mean... The way I talk is the way the old timers talk. They say what has to be said, and sometimes people don't like it, and that's fine. You know, uh, there, 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 there's politicians that. There's a difference between being a politician and a leader. A politician will change their tone depending on who's in the room, or they'll 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 say things that, uh, depending on who's in the room or what the issue is, they'll lean which way the wind blows them but a leader will stand up to the wind. And, and a leader doesn't change their tone or their views no matter who's in the room. I don't care. I don't give a damn if some people don't vote for me. I'm not out to please everybody. As a team, you've done an extraordinary job. Well, it depends. I mean, some things uh, we suck at. Some things we've made some stupid mistakes, like, like every business person has done. Um, we could do better. We should be doing better. And... I think that uh, our internal record internally, and there's a lot of stuff that you leave in the locker room. You don't put it out there in the public. You know, what's said and done in the locker room stays in the locker room. So there's stuff on this reserve that, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to say how bad we're doing. We could be doing a heck of a lot better. But, uh, but, uh, but the really good thing about it is, is there's no finish line in business. You know, there, there, there's no time that, uh, there's never a time that you can raise the flag and say, okay, we, we've done it, we're, we're there. There's no finish line in business, and entrepreneurs and business people uh, realize there's no finish line. And you carry the ball as far as you can carry it, or, or raise the numbers, or look at the stats, and the and uh, get the community or the band stats up there as high as you can take them. And you hope the next council that comes around and the next group of OCC band members raise the bar even more. You use a number of sports metaphors, and I know you are a lifelong athlete. So why is sports so important to you? 
it's competition and, uh, and business is competition. And there's a scorecard. I love that about sports. There's a scorecard and we should have a scorecard. I always say the band scorecard should be the number of jobs it creates. Uh, those wages in those jobs, that they be a, you know, a, a decent salary or a decent hourly wage, and that uh, the amount of money the band brings in, and that money is put towards um, opportunities. I don't have a love of money. I have a love of opportunity for this youth singing band. On that note, have you and Council been able to create opportunities for every member of the band? Every band member that wants a job has a job. But we got a group of lazy asses, as the old timers call them. People you could pay 100 bucks an hour, they still get their ass fired because they drink and drug too much. Or they're, just, they're, they're just what the old timers call lazy asses, mm -hmm. or the lazy ones. But we have, we have more jobs than we do band members. We have over 1,000 jobs on this res. And when you're talking 550 people, we have people in Texas. We have people who are adopted out, they live in Winnipeg. Uh, every band member that wants a job has a job. Wow. How many I know the corporation is involved in a joint venture or two, and you also generate revenue from land leases, and you also own and operate a number of businesses. How many businesses does the corporation own? We have about 14, 14 band-owned businesses. We have a cement, cement company, gas stations, golf course, uh, forestry operations. Um, campground, recreational vehicle park, um, residential leases, commercial leases. Yeah. Yeah. And what about the prison? Again, that's not our prison. Often people think, how's your prison going? It's not our prison. It's a provincial prison. They just happen to be, it's the first time a prison's ever been leased on, on Indian Reserve land in this country. It's not our prison, but there's 300 jobs there. It was our biggest land lease ever. At, the build out there was over 200 million. We got a big, that, that one land lease paid off our total industrial park. So our industrial park's totally paid off by that one provincial land lease. Which, uh, and I razzed the white guys that work there. I played hockey with a lot of them. I told me, I bet you never thought you'd be, you'd be coming on the reserve to go to work and that you, you get your paycheck from something on the Seuss Indian Reserve. That's what's paying your bills and paying your mortgage and supporting your family. So I tease those white guys all the time. I said, you're working on the res, making a living. That's good. I like that. So do I. Chief Louie, thank you ever so much for taking the time to speak with me. And I wish you and Council continued success.